Okay, it seems to be that everyone can hear me. Awesome. Good evening, everyone, or whether it be good morning, wherever you are. It is such a pleasure to have you all here with us this evening or this morning. My name is Tamai Campbell, and I'll be your moderator for this evening. Now, we're definitely in for a treat, and I do not mean that as an understatement. Tonight is going to be a session that I think you should get your pens, get your notepads, because we're definitely going to be learning some important nuggets and walking away very much informed. Now, just before we get into what we're going to be talking about, we have to set out some ground rules. So as you know, this is a session put on by the UAA Soft and Life Skills Webinar Series. And because we're it's and because of that as well, this is a recorded session. So you don't have to worry. If you want the recording, you can also request it. Also, there will come a part of the session where you will be able to ask the or, or awesome uh, presenter here questions. So you don't have to worry about that, where you can either post them in the chat or utilize the raise hand feature where you'll be acknowledged and you can come onto the mic. And it's a voice activated call. So I'm asking you kindly, if you're not speaking, to please mute your microphones. So now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, let's get into tonight's session. So the topic of tonight's session is who am I really? How to define your personal identity to excel in your community. And we have Miss Lauren Bordelon who is going to be taking us through this tonight. But let's get to know Lauren just a little bit. So Lauren is a marketing mentor and brand strategist for service providing entrepreneurs looking to become highly in demand and scale their magnetic, passion-driven brand online. After working in advertising and then starting scaling and selling her boutique marketing agency, she launched Brand Good Time to pursue a love she always had, being a mentor to budding entrepreneurs. Lauren is all about fun. I definitely love that and uses her passion for creativity to show up online, build her community and impact the lives of her clients. She absolutely loves connecting with entrepreneurs and supporting them on their journey to making their business and personal dreams a reality. Ladies and gentlemen, I would definitely love some round of applause for our amazing presenter this evening. Miss Lauren um, Bordelon, the virtual stage. Thank you so much. I am so excited to be here. Oh, let me just make sure my mic's all set. Um, and then I just want to make sure, yes, okay, I can share my screen. So I have a little bit of a presentation um, to go over. Just, I like to have some visuals. I have a creative background. So if it doesn't, it's got to look good, then I feel good. And so we're all good. So give me one quick second. I'm going to get that set up and then we're going to dive in. And I just want to encourage comments, questions. Um, I'm going to definitely pause and make sure I can answer them. Um, I definitely want to go into a little bit of like my story first and how I was able to truly define who I was to get to you know the place I am today. So let me just get this going and I will share my screen. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay. <clears throat> can I get a thumbs up if we can see this okay? <laughs> okay, let me make sure I got the chat open too. All right, cool, cool. All right, so who am I really? This is what we're gonna talk about today. Um, I'm going to start by sharing a little bit of my story. So I'm Lauren, I'm a marketing mentor to creative entrepreneurs through my brand called Brand Good Time. Now, I don't really wanna go into my business right now because it's not super, super important in my story. It's where I've landed, it's how I've gotten it's, it's the part of what, how I've gotten to where I am today, but I want to talk about my childhood and how I grew up because that is a huge part of everybody's story and how everybody is shaped into a human being you are today and how you're going to make that impact in your community. So I had a pretty privileged childhood, but with my own set of problems, I'm, I've, I live in Florida currently, but I kind of grew up all over the United States. We moved a lot because my dad was in, in corporate culture, corporate America, and was climbing the ladder. So got to move around a lot, which I thought was super cool as a kid. Um, has its own set of problems as you're growing up and wanting to maintain friendships, but that's okay, I digress. Um, but here's the thing. I grew up with a parent who did, a, did the best with the tools she had, but she created a lot of trauma and stress in my life. 
I learned a lot at a young age and I learned how to be resilient, independent, make my own rules, which got me into a lot of trouble. (laughs) I was constantly being told who I was, even though I knew that that wasn't it a lot of the time. And deep down, I knew what I was meant for, which was greatness. So I had a lot of issues at home. I was constantly in trouble. I was constantly being told I questioned authority and that was going to create a lot of problems in my life. But really, I was standing up for what I believed in. And so it was, it was very conflicting for me as a child. This shone through in a lot of ways. I come high school, had a lot of issues at home. I had a lot of issues at school. I ran away. I tried to emancipate myself at one point. And I was just trying to find any way to be away from home for longer periods of time because I just didn't feel like my environment where I was and where I lived, I didn't feel like anyone got me or understood me. And I think moving a lot was a huge part of this identity crisis that I was living in because I didn't, I was never somewhere long enough to stay within a group of friends to learn different social norms. And it was very challenging for me. But my big break was college. So college was when everything around me, I was finally in control of, but I was still having this identity crisis. I had moved around so much as a kid and I struggled so much at home. A part of a big part of my story is my mom thought something was wrong with me. So she (laughs) quite literally dragged me to several different psychotherapists and was trying to put a label on, on me because I was rebellious. I was questioning authority. I didn't agree with everything she said. So that was labeled as a diagnosis of bipolar disorder, which has since been um, <laughs> reevaluated and is not true. It was just, I was this like angsty teenager, but I was told I was diseased and incapable of a lot of things. The way she explained these things to me, I thought something was really wrong with me. So it again, created this huge identity crisis in myself. So when I went to college, I had a lot of turmoil in friendships and relationships, and I had to pave my own way, which was very lonely to me because I didn't know the right way to be, if that makes sense. So fast forward a couple years ago. So I'm 28 years old right now, just for anyone who's wondering, I turned 28 this month, crazy. But at age 25, I was like, okay, I went to therapy a lot as a kid, let me try this again now. And let me see like, you know, what I can work through as an adult. This is where I learned I wasn't the problem and I was never the problem. This was when I discovered who I truly was. <laughs> and this is where things really started to shift in my life. And what I, on part, part of what I do is I teach and help entrepreneurs. But the other side is like, I really like to dig into this side of figuring out who you are and what you're really capable of. And for me, I didn't find that out till I was 25. I found out I was a smart and capable person who was capable of doing more than just push through, capable of doing more than, you know, shoving those stigmas down and things I've been told and trying to just find that next best thing of like, who am I? What am I doing? I just, I was finally able to just accept like, this is me. This is who I am. This is normal. So it gave me a lot of inspiration at that point and energy and clarity to pursue what I was truly passionate about, which at the time I had just sold my marketing agency. So being a mentor to to entrepreneurs, this was something that was really exciting, really exciting to me. So that's a little bit of my story. Now I want to talk about how, how this can help you and how my story can help you inspire you and help you set the framework for identifying who you are really as a person in your community and how you want to excel in life. I love this quote, and I think it just kind of goes perfectly with the story I just shared. Without stress, there can be no resilience. If I didn't go through all those things, I wouldn't be resilient in so many areas of my life. I don't think I would have the ambition and the tenacity to just push through and really just make everything I want happen. Not to say that you can't if you don't go through trauma, but those were, that was a lot of fire that was ignited in me to kind of be who I am today. So I want to talk about, you know, who are you really? We are all exposed to different stresses in life in one way or another. But the amazing thing about stress is that it has the potential to make us stronger human beings, right? You have to choose optimism in stress though. You have to choose to not be weighed down by stress and not see the negatives in stress. You have to choose to rise above it. So you have to choose it to let it shape the, the creativities that can arise and inspire amazing things within you like it did for me. But I want to dive into four main pillars that um, are truly about defining who you are. So let's get going. Okay, themes. 
themes. What are the themes around you in your life? This is something you might want to write down or maybe start brainstorming, but what are the themes in your life? What have you been told or who have you been told that you are? I believe our stories shape who we are. And within those stories, how we acted and reacted in certain situations. So for me, ever since I was a little kid, I stood my ground for what I believed was right. Sometimes that meant being selfish in my decisions, but I've never regretted any decision I've made that's gotten to me where I am today. Never. Like it's a huge thing I believe in is just, there is no regret. There's just learning lessons. And if I feel like it's a mistake, okay, I learned from that mistake. Another theme in my life was innovation. So I was that kid who literally couldn't take no for an answer. And I always found ways around certain situations. So younger Lauren, when my parents took my phone away, I would remove the SIM card before I gave it to them and put it into a phone they didn't know I had. (laughs) And I was that innovative, sneaky person. I was like, okay, well, I can find a way around this. Or if, if like a piece of technology was breaking, I was like, Well, I just have to like, you have to bang it against the wall three times and it works again. Like I was always trying to find ways to make things work. Another, um, oh, well, what I want to talk about is this transferred into my adulthood and being able to work around obstacles. Obstacles are actually my favorite because it's exciting. I'm like, ooh, a challenge. I get to work through this. I think that was because I was so innovative as a child. (laughs) Another huge theme in my life was travel. And a big part, a big reason for that is because I lived all over the country and I have a huge family on both my mom and dad's side. So we traveled a lot to see family. We traveled a lot in general. Instead of um, gifts, my family was big on vacations or just like going new places. So I got to do a lot of travel and was fortunate enough to do a good amount of that. But I made this a theme in my adult life as well. And what travel at a young age did for me was immerse me into uncomfortable situations on the regular. And I also traveled alone as a kid. I I did a lot, (laughs) but going to places where you don't speak the language or like know where you are, you have to figure it out. Right. So that inspired me to be able to work through a lot of situations, both in work and personal life as those uncomfortable situations arise, because you're always going to, you're always going to go into new territory almost every day in your life. And you have to figure out how to navigate those situations that traveling and being in uncomfortable situations definitely warmed me up. Um, when I was younger. Okay. You're saying you're still seeing the first slide. Hold on. Do you see the theme slide now? I want to make sure. (laughs) Nope. Okay. Let me try resharing my screen. Hold on. Share screen. Themes. Okay. Can you see it now? Yes, seeing it now. Okay, great. Thank you for letting me know. All right. So the next thing I want to move on to is inspo or inspiration. This is really in who you look up to in your life. So I've never really had a role model. And when people have asked me, like, who's your role model? I'm like, I don't know. I've never framed my life after someone or I've never just constantly drawn inspiration from someone but I felt like a lot of people around me have inspired who I am today and even though I don't directly just associate them as like a role model I think that's kind of what people are talking about when they say who's your role model hold on I just want to make sure I can see the chat here we go okay great okay so we all have people in our lives that at some point we look at and think I want that life that they have, or I want their life. Those are the people you want to keep an eye on. Perhaps you don't follow their every move and try and do the same, but you draw from their positive experiences and help like allow them to help shape your own. I had a lot of key players in the way of moving forward in my life. So when I was ever in a negative situation, who could I look to? What positive energy could I gravitate towards to help me push through those situations? One of those people were my grandfather. From what I knew of him at a young age, he was the shining human being. As I grew older, he was not that to maybe my parents or my family, but that didn't matter to me. Like he treated me like gold and really instilled in me that I deserve everything that I want or that I can go after and get. 
Uh, he was a very successful man in marketing, which is so funny. And, and years after he passed away, I received a letter that he had saved for me. And it was so crazy. And there he was like, I can only imagine where you are now, like in marketing or tech. And I was 15 when he passed away. I had no idea. I, I think I wanted to be an actress or something like that. So it was just, that was so cool for me to have that kind of role model. Another person or another couple of people were different school teachers I had in high school. I was editor in chief of my yearbook and I so looked up to the yearbook teacher I had because he had so much experience and knowledge. And also he saw like a lot of potential in me and I felt that. So for that reason, I really looked up to him and he was a big mentor for me. And he's probably one of the big reasons I have a business today because he saw that potential in me and pushed me into a leadership position. And I learned so, so much. Um, Taylor Swift. <laughs> Some of you may roll your eyes at that. I love Taylor Swift. What's funny is every time she came out with new music, she's three years older than me. And she was always three years, like two or three years behind in her music, like when she released. So when she released the song 15, if you know about it, I was 15 and I was dating someone on the football team. And there was this, like in that song, she talks about the football team. I'm still so inspired by her and how she constantly is reinventing herself and still just climbing the charts and just kind of a household name now around the world. Um, she's someone I'm inspired by because she's pushed through a lot of different in her eyes and her ways. Like she's pushed through obstacles and she's where she is today, which is very successful. So definitely someone I'm inspired by. Another person is my boyfriend. I had to, I was, I was a little hard when we first started dating and he, this is someone who he's seven years older than me definitely a little more ahead in life. And he taught me so much about patience and kindness and treating people well. And I saw, you know, his long-term friendships and people around him. And I was like, wow, if I just treated my clients that way or the people I meet and not succumb to the South Florida culture I live in, which is pretty harsh, things may work a little more in my favor. And they did. So really just letting those people around you inspire you, letting them help you, you know, become a better person all very important things, but really identify who those people are in your life. And I recommend writing down. So make a list of maybe 10 people who've inspired your life from age zero to now and write down one positive thing about each of them. I did this exercise a few years ago and I was like filled with so much gratitude after I did it because I realized, you know, in some, in some times when I feel down on myself or not liking where I am in a process. I remember the people around me who have inspired me and helped me get to where I am today. And I just kind of forget about that. And I'm grateful and I'm able to push through. All right. So our next point here is going to be influence. So this kind of piggybacks off of inspiration, right? You have people who inspire you, but like, it's not realistic for me to be best friends with Taylor Swift. So <laughs> I can't say that she's a direct influence in my life because I don't know every part of her. I just know what she puts out on the internet and we don't communicate as people. So influence is really, really important in shaping, you know, who you, who you are and who, where you're going and who you're going to be. So I've always felt a little more intuitive than most, but more recently I've been selective of who I keep in my circle. So what I mean by that. I think because I moved around so much, I was constantly like having to make new friends. <clears throat> so I'm, I've been told I'm like this likable person. So anytime I meet someone, it's very easy for me to make a connection with them and be their friend, but they may not always be the right person. And this was something I was told at a young age is don't be so trusting of every single person who comes into your life. Be very careful who you give that to. It's kind of the same thing here. The sooner um, you can recognize that and make sure the people around you are people who can positively influence you, the better. Um, so I've been more selective now of who's in my circle. Anyone who doesn't match where you're going, where you are, or, you know, again, where you want to go is someone you need to consider peeling back from, maybe not peeling away from. I know we can't choose our family and maybe there's some family in your life who may not be the best influence on where you want to go, but you can choose to surround yourself more with people who do fit the mold of that. So you've probably heard this, but they say the five people around you are the ones who are going to most likely influence your path. And it's true. Like you are the sum of the five people you hang out with the most. For me, when I had to really think about this, when I was figuring out who am I, it looked like peeling back from friends and relationships who didn't serve my bigger mission 
of success and success is different for everybody. Success for me looks like working on my business and associating myself with people who understood where I was at in my journey and who could support me and really just be there for me, especially when I was going through it or just needed someone to talk to and not someone who was just like, well, that's stupid. Or I don't understand how you do that. I prefer to work in corporate culture. It just wasn't what I was going to thrive with having around me. Um, it was exhausting and negative for me to be around people who constantly had problems in their lives too. This was a huge wake up moment for me when I realized a couple of my really close friends just never had anything good to say. Always were complaining and they complaining about things that were not that bad, <laughs> you know, like they could really just choose to see the positive in those situations. So I had to peel away from that and choose to surround myself with people who are grateful and um, speaking highly of the things happening in their lives. So you quickly can find, though, if you continue to hang around those people, that it's going to infiltrate your own mind and your own thoughts about yourself. You might be sitting there right now thinking like, oh, wow, that's true. Like I have this one friend, Nancy, and she talks really negatively about all these things. And I find myself leaving that conversation feeling very heavy or thinking negatively too. That's what you want to avoid, um, especially, you know, in this next path in your life and when you're really, truly trying to find, define who you are. So point of all of this is take matters into your own hands, define who's around you and actively choose to be around people who are going to be positive experiences for your life. Okay. My final point here is going to be about boundaries. This is probably my favorite one, probably my most important one. If you don't have boundaries in your life, it's very easy to let somebody or something infiltrate the process of defining who you are and staying on that path. So the sooner you learn, this is the big thing with boundaries, the sooner you learn to say no to something that doesn't support your bigger mission, the better. I stopped calling my mom just to appease her because those conversations every other day were really stressing me out. <laughs> I love my mom. We have our differences, but it was a boundary we needed to put into place. And when I put that boundary into place, we fought a lot less. And I was able to save this energy I had for putting it into my work and furthering my mission with my brand. So I stopped allowing her to bother me. And it was great. <laughs> I started saying no to obligations that didn't fall in line with my bigger mission. So, for example, if someone came to me and asked to teach on a workshop to a tech company, it didn't really make sense to me because I work with entrepreneurs. If it's a nonprofit like this, like this is what I love doing. I love giving back my time and inspiring other people. That does fall in line with my mission, but I also have to be careful of capacity. And that's my advice to you is don't take on things that as more you, the more you add to your plate, more stressed out you're getting because you're like, well, am I going to have time to this? And this is where we find like people procrastinating. When I was in college, I was juggling for my sophomore, junior, and senior year, part-time internship, full-time job, full-time school, tried to be in a sorority, <laughs> didn't work out, and friends. I graduated with a 2.9 GPA, <laughs> okay, because of this. However, I had, I, I went on to work in an agency and I'm not saying that like your GPA really defines who you are and where you're going, but I struggled a lot. I didn't have good boundaries to set in place because no one really taught me that, that like boundaries are important and you can say no to things. Oh, not to mention I was taking cover at a nightclub after my, after my restaurant job just to make extra cash. And this was back when gas was like almost $5 a gallon. So I was like, I really need the money, but I was juggling a lot. And I remember thinking like, I can't wait until I'm not juggling six million things. Well, as you get older, you do. So the joke was on me. But um, the point there was, I was really bad at setting boundaries and I was always saying yes to social events and yes to obligations. I was like president of the runner's club on campus. I didn't have time for that. I didn't say no to that. And so therefore like other areas of my life suffered. My relationships suffered, my friendships suffered. My performance at school obviously suffered. So really important to set those boundaries. Um, Another one is at this point now, I make a point to make my weekend sacred. So I don't take client calls or meetings on the weekend. Although that's not really standard. Uh, it's just a firm, I, it's a firm I think I have. If they have an event on the weekends, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to make that. 
that's my time for family. And I see most of my friends during the week too. So that's the same thing with my friends is like, if you want to hang out, happy to do that after work on a weeknight. These are just boundaries I've set and they've allowed me to create more capacity in my life for things that fulfill me and push the needle forward. And I'm leaps and bounds ahead, even in 2021 that I was in 2020 because of all these boundaries that I've set. So I want to wrap this up by saying, I know that as human beings, we all evolve and change. And if I could tell you one thing right now, it's that if you're not happy with where you're at currently or who you are currently, it's all in your power to change, I promise. Because you get to make the life that you want. You get to be the person you want. No one gets to tell you who you are and who you're, where you're going to be. I want to back up for a second and say, you always hear people saying like, oh, I was never going to amount to anything. And I was like, that wasn't going to work. And good luck trying that. It's not going to work out. I only had two people in my life ever tell me that. And one was my mom. Like we just had a lot of issues when I was a child and, and she was infiltrating my brain with those things. But another was a boss I had who was like, what do you mean you're going to start a company? (laughs) I was like, oh no, he doesn't believe in me. And that was a huge blow. But I think a lot of people face that more than maybe I ever did. So I just want to tell you, if you ever, if someone ever tells you you can't do something, it's not true. And don't, don't let, maybe that's someone that you got to peel away from because it's their own insecurities. If someone's telling you you can't do something, it's because they're insecure about it and they don't want you or they, they're afraid of seeing you do better than them. So really think about that too. But the beauty in making the life you want and being the person you want. And what excites me so much is that we all have experiences that are going to shape the directions of our life. I used to think when I was younger, because I would embarrass myself a lot. I'm a klutz. I was a klutz. I'm still a klutz. I fall over things. I spill things. Like I'm always breaking things. And I always used to think, I hope I never ever have to feel embarrassment ever again. Cause that's like, that feeling was so horrible to me. Like everyone has different feelings. They never want to feel right. Embarrassment's like way up there on the list for me. Like I just, it just kills me to the core. <laughs> and the funny thing now is like, I welcome that next time I get embarrassed because I'm going to learn something out of it. It's also going to be something I can look back on and it can be funny. It's also an experience that I can just draw from and, and tell, tell a story about later in life. So it kind of excites me to go through experiences, whether they're good or bad, like you teach something and come out the other side so much better. And that's why we always look to our um, elders and say they have a lot of wisdom because they've had a lot of experiences. So whether that's getting married, having kids, becoming an entrepreneur, working your way up a corporate ladder or packing a backpack and traveling around the world, there's all these experiences you have to look forward to in your life that are going to also shape who you are because we are constantly involving. So how cool is that? <laughs> I think that's so cool that like, we don't know what's next. We, we may have an idea, but like, I don't know what I'm, where I'm going to be in 10 years. And that's really exciting to me that I don't know. I never want to have a crystal ball. I will be that person who refuses to know what's in the future because I, every single moment of like unfolding that is so exciting to me, but that's my presentation Um, Oh, I guess I never like flipped the slides. (laughs) Open Q&A, here we are. Um, That's my presentation. I want to recap the four points just real quick um, and then open the floor to any questions, thoughts, anything you want to talk about. Um, But real quickly, the four themes are here. Or what are the four things? (laughs) Or what themes are around you? What have you been told that you are? Write those down. Then figure out who you look up to and identify those people in your life. Write down everything positive about them. Then think about who's around you and reshape that. Make sure the people that are around you are the people who are positive influences. And lastly, do not be afraid to set boundaries and make sure you're setting boundaries in your life because it'll overall just make you a happier, less stressed human being. So With that being said, I want to thank you so much for your time. Thank you for letting me speak to you and share my story. Um, I would love to connect with you guys. I'm on LinkedIn at with (laughs) on LinkedIn as Lauren Bordelon. I'm on Instagram as Brand Good Time, and my website's BrandGoodTime.com. But yeah, with that being said, if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. You can drop them in the chat or come up here with me on this virtual stage, and I would be so happy to answer them.
Thank you so much, Lauren. This is Tomoy, the moderator here. I just wanted to really thank you for your presentation. I definitely learned a lot. I have a few questions, but just before I get into my questions again, just reaffirm me. If you have any questions, please raise them now. Come on to the mic. You can raise your hand and unmute, or you can feel free to type them in the chat. I think while persons are getting ready to have their questions, I have one for you. So you really spoke on boundaries and that for me really touched a chord for me because I do think it's something that I personally struggle with. So what would be some of the more practical uh, steps that I could take to really set those healthy boundaries, to be very honest? Yeah, I think there's a lot of different ways you can look at that. Um, one example of a big boundary I set with myself is time blocking my calendar. So are you familiar with that? <laughs> yeah. So my calendar um, basically is Mondays and Fridays. I don't take client meetings at all. It's strictly to work on my business or to have a little bit of extra personal time for myself during the week. I don't know about anyone else, but I hate grocery shopping on the weekends. I'll do it, but I don't like it because that's when everybody's grocery shopping. So um I will sometimes take a day, like a, some time during the week to do that. And that, that'll be on Mondays and Fridays. So that means I get all my client meetings and client work done Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That is a huge boundary that changed a lot for me. It changed my capacity issues. It changed my stress levels. It just really, really helped all the way around. Um, some other professional boundaries you can set, especially in corporate America, or if you, if you are someone who has a boss or you're applying for jobs and, and you're going to be working, not corporate America per se, but like in a corporate culture is, you know, when you're not at work, you don't take work phone calls, setting those boundaries. You're not going to work weekends. Um, that should be accepted today in 2021 to have those boundaries outside of work. Um, and same thing with family, say like, I'm at work from nine to five, like I won't take call phone calls then, but you can text me. Setting those boundaries that are going to help you continue to be successful and not get distracted from like your mission, right? And whether that's personally or professionally, I think um, having those kinds of like time bound boundaries are really important. Thank you so much. But Lauren, I got another question while you were just saying that someone wanted to know, so how can I do all of that, like setting the boundaries without stepping on anyone's toes or without offending others? Yeah. So how do I do that? Without, yeah. Without stepping on people's toes. That's great. Um, a great question. <laughs> you want to come from a place of why, like you don't need to give them the deep explanation of why you're setting these boundaries, but you want to say that, you know, it makes me feel X, Y, Z when I can X, Y, Z. So I'm not a therapist, but this is what works for me. So really it's, it's, I don't think you're stepping on toes when you explain it that way. And you give a little bit of a reason and tell them why you feel that way and why you feel like you need that boundary. I think if you just very blunt, like with people in my life, I'm like, it stresses me out when you tell me 20 minutes before we have a meeting that you're not going to be able to make it. I prefer more notice. So it, it, that's a little blunt. I would say the different boundary I set there with contracts is like, you need to give me 24 hours notice before a meeting cancellation and then, you know, hope that they adhere to that. But just informing them and being very blunt and straightforward, like, I respect your time. I want you to respect my time. This is why I have this boundary. And I and please, please respect that. Thank you so much, Lauren. Uh, I, I'm getting ch um, questions, but I just want to say to everyone you can also unmute your mic if possible and come on so if you don't want me to read it out you can definitely do so but i have one here and it's someone was saying that i feel anxiety when i try something new how can i fix that and that's for marcia campbell she feels anxiety when she tries something new how can she get over that how can she fix it oh my gosh that's a really good question it's a little difficult for me because that anxiety, like I mentioned, like excites me. So I think I would say like redirect that anxiety or step back and say, why does this give me anxiety? I'm starting something new. Why does it give me anxiety? And try and work through that. And maybe, um, maybe it might be that like you're overwhelmed by the concept of this new thing. Try and find ways to like make that new thing bite-sized. How can you break it down and really simplify it? Or how can you ask for help from people around you for this new thing? And that's a lot of what I do with like the mentorship is 
you're starting new things and that's extremely overwhelming. Like sometimes I have nightmares thinking back to when I started my business and I had no support. And it, I can see that when there's something new like that, you get a lot of anxiety as a result. So I think identifying why you have the anxiety, like why it's making you anxious and then maybe asking for support, finding someone who's done that thing that you're trying for the first time, ask them questions that could probably ease your mind a lot. <laughs> Thank you so much. So we have one more here. I understand we have the power to decide our life, but we, but my problem rather isn't making a change. It's knowing where to start. How do you start to take action? What practices did you put into place? Yeah, it's knowing where to start. That's a good point. So I'm trying to think about an experience I've had. So sometimes what's unfortunate is sometimes things are out of your control. So you have to <clears throat> instead figure out what's in your control and what you can change. So oh, I want to scroll up because I want to make sure I see this question at full. It's not, it's not, it's not knowing where to start. So I would say where I started to took action was in deciding what I could control and what I could change. Um, practices I put into place is really just being mindful of what's in front of me. And again, what I can control. Um, I want to try and tie this to an example. So decide our life, but problem isn't making the change. It's not knowing where to start. So let's just say that you want to pivot careers entirely. I think, again, it goes back to finding people who have done the same thing or where are where you want to be and having those conversations. I think a lot of us think we have to try and figure things out on our own. And that's not the case. I think we can lean on support from people around us. Um, identifying where those people are can be challenging. I remember looking for my first mentor and I was like flabbergasted because what I found was I had to pay $10,000 to even talk to somebody. So instead what I did was looked within my community. I got involved in local organizations and found people who were where I wanted to be and started having conversations with them. Um, so I would really say, I think it's just finding people who are where you're going or where you want to be and starting there and allowing them and their journey to help guide you. Thank you so much. Uh, Lauren, this is a personal one as well. So let's say you start to know, but you didn't start setting those healthy boundaries. And so you probably overcommitted. Now you're trying to reel yourself in. How is it that you try to navigate that without, again, offending anybody or probably coming off as being, I suppose, lackadaisical? Because first you committed, but now you're realizing I don't have the capacity anymore and I want to pull back. How do you not feel so guilty about that? How do you not feel as if you've become complete? How do you, sorry, I can, I can't, I'm having a hard time hearing you. So you said, how do you not feel so guilty about, about oversharing and Oh, I'm sorry. Let me repeat. So I was saying that. So first you started off, you didn't set any healthy boundaries. And so you probably overcommitted beyond capacity. Now you've learned, you're trying to get yourself together and you might have to step away. So how do you probably navigate the feeling of trying to not to feel so guilty because you can't commit anymore? Probably saying, okay, I'm going to step down even though I signed up in the first place how do you get over that feeling of okay am i now a complacent person because i committed and now i'm pulling out of the ring or can people just simply understand i can't commit anymore so please we're humans and we all make mistakes and i think that feeling guilty is part of that i think it's just and i think that's a good thing to feel guilty that means that you like aren't a sociopath <laughs> and you possess empathy. So um, I think it's okay to feel guilty, recognize that and talk about it. Be like, just be, communicate that. I feel guilty. Here's why, but he, you know, this is the direction I want to move and be firm in that. Be firm in that and like believing in yourself and then who you're communicating that with as well. Thank you so much. So we have one, another question here. Someone's asking Karen, what are some practical ways to assist your community and to network in doing so? What are some practical ways to assist your community and to network doing so? So this is a great question and something I actually didn't touch on. Um, I'm involved in a couple organizations locally here. What I suggest doing is the one I'm really involved in, which is how I know Thai is the Greater Fort Lauderdale Chamber of Commerce. 
Um, I know in the United States, this is very common for Chamber of Commerces, um, but there's a lot of organizations within that. And through joining that organization, which has an emphasis on small businesses in Fort Lauderdale, I was able to meet some nonprofits through that organization. Now, if you don't have the luxury of that kind of holding to be able to infiltrate out like a spider web and meet those people, I would say look up some local nonprofits in your area um, and see how you can get involved. So because I was involved in that local chamber, I met somebody who was on a board at um, a cancer support community organization here, and I was asked to be on the board. Um, so I know the question is, what are some practical ways to assist your community and network while doing so? Giving back your time is great. Going into these nonprofit organizations and again, giving back your time, great. You can't go into anything that is nonprofit, in my opinion, with the mindset of how can I network and what can I get out of this? Um, when I switched my mindset from that very quickly, <laughs> from what can I get out of this to how can I help other people? That is when I was getting more business. And still to this day, like that is how I've been able to um, oh, so network in terms of teaming up to do so. I'm not sure I understand, <laughs> but um, by networking, what do you mean, Karen? <laughs> network, not doing it solo. Okay, to assist your community, I think just banding up with um, other like-minded people who feel the same way as you do. So if that's people in your office, if that's colleagues and just getting involved locally, I think that's great, um, but practical way, ways to assist them. Um, I don't, I, I'm not sure I'm understanding the question. I'm sorry. Uh, Karen, is it possible to come on mic and probably clarify? Yeah, that would be so, so much Lauren, easier. <laughs> to answer you. Okay, she said okay. one second. So I want to address this one comment. Anxiety and fear is 99.9% .9 of my life. I want to quit my job and move on, but I can't find the way forward. I feel stuck. So, Hester, I would say first and foremost, you know, why do you want to quit your job? And secondly, out of that, what do you want to do instead? And I would say try and find people. I always go back to people and human connections, people who, again, are where you want to be. And you may not know what that looks like career wise, but people who have the life you want and start thinking about that and start thinking about your passions and what you really like to do and see if you can find lines of work there. I think it's okay to pivot. My mom just pivoted from being a realtor to a liquor rep <laughs> locally where she lives. And I think that's so cool. She wasn't happy in real estate anymore. And she said, I really love wine. I want to sell wine. And she did it. And it was quite, it was such a transition for her, but she's like, I've never seen my mom so happy. So I just think you have to think about that anxiety and fear. And why do you have these anxiety and fears? Work through those struggles, figure out what you want to do and go for it. I know it's not as easy as it sounds, but it goes back to really being around those people who have the life you want. Yes. There was another question here that I want to kind of address too. Um, what are your views on the opinion that a startup you need to hustle hard in the beginning so that somewhat narrows the boundaries? Okay. Um, I'm actually recording a podcast about this soon because it's so good. Um, hustle culture is something I preach to stay away from. It's not about, I think, how hard you work or how much you work, but it's about how efficient you are with what you work on. Typically, hustle culture breeds do all the things, but again, this goes back to like all the things you do are not always going to move the needle, whether that's in your business, your life, or your career path. So again, it's setting boundaries. It's working efficiently. It's being realistic. You don't need to work 60 hours a week. <laughs> if you're in a corporate job and you work 40 hours a week and you can be efficient and get things done there, that may look like, you know, someone assigns you a task and you go to them and you say, I think there's a better way to do this and I can save time. And it's having those conversations. 
um, in business, I think it's assessing everything that's on your plate. So actually I have some examples right here. So this is like one of my to-do lists. It has five things on it, which goes against my rules. I only set three tasks to complete in a day and they have to be achievable. They have to be something I can finish in that day. So an example of that is, um, okay, I wrote down content here. So I broke my rules again there, but instead of saying content planning, which is so big and so vague, right? Like scheduling or creating social media posts for my business. Instead, what I'll write is um, write the captions and design the graphics for the next three social media posts. And when I cross that off the list, I feel like I've gotten something done and it's achievable. And I think um, when I switched to that, when I switched to these three achievable tasks a day, um, it was very surprising to me. I was able to finish things in like a couple of hours and have extra time to start chipping away at other tasks. And so it was like less overwhelming because I was able to actually get through things. Um, so that would, that's kind of my thoughts on the whole hustle culture thing. I don't think you need to slave and work that much 60 hours a week, 70 hours a week. It's just not realistic. Um, don't ever feel like you have to do that. <laughs> that's my advice. Of course. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Lauren, I'm not sure on. I'm not sure uh, if Karen's going to come on yet, but we have one more question. Uh, someone wanted to thank you for your presentation, but also wanted you to share some advice or some food for thought on how is it that they could navigate dealing with their, if their parents or family or friends are hindering their growth. Yeah, so for me that looked like, and this is what worked for me, and this is what I worked on in therapy and through a lot of conversations with people around me, I was fortunate enough to, I am fortunate enough to live three hours away from my family. I think that while we don't get to choose our family, we don't have to love and respect every single person. So sometimes what that looks like is choosing not to call them often or choosing not to go home for every holiday and setting a boundary as to why, and they should respect that boundary. Some parents have a lot of trouble with that, but you can't let how they feel about your boundary affect you. You can feel a little guilty because like I said, that means you're an empath, but ultimately it's your life. It's your sanity. It's the stress you don't want. So I think just telling them why you feel a certain way or not going to things because you know it's going to bother you or affect you know your stress levels or how you're going to feel the rest of the day after you're around them um i don't think you should ever feel guilty for choosing not to be around your family in certain situations if you know that that's not what you want to do thank you so much uh, karen i i get that you're ready to go so you can go ahead and speak yes hi good night everybody and thank you for your presentation, Lauren. Uh, my question really was recognizing that there's so much work to be done um, in the community. There's so much different uh, projects um, in terms of um, people who are less fortunate, for example, um, all the different social issues. And so I was just thinking in terms of networking with others to to solve it because I think why I haven't done anything sooner it's like where do I start you know how who do I um join with um but you did answer um a great part of that when you spoke about the NGOs and um giving up your time yes but joining with local non-profits uh so that did answer but that is basically the, the, the gist of uh, the question where my mind was. Yeah. Um, getting involved in nonprofits is so fulfilling. <laughs> so if you are not involved in one, I absolutely recommend that. Um, it's pretty easy to find them locally, but now within this like COVID world we live in, I think a lot of nonprofits are like yearning for help too. So just reaching out to organizations that you are really passionate about online and saying, how can I volunteer my time? I think a lot of them are open to that right now too. So um, did you have another question or something I could answer around all of that? No, that, that is fine. Cool. That is good. Good. good, 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 cool. Thank you. Of course.
Well, Lauren, from my end, I'm not seeing any more questions other than someone was asking you to repeat the social media handles, but you did. Oh, wait, Elaine had one, one more question. Elaine, you could come on the mic and speak if that's okay, or if you prefer me to read it out, no problem. But we want to hear your voice if possible. Elaine, I, I understand what you're saying. What I, so she said, please clarify about not respecting everyone. Should we respect everyone noting that respect does not mean to agree with? Yeah, so let me reword that a little bit. We may not respect some of the, the ways that they treat us. And that's what I, that's more of what I meant. So I, I have issues respecting certain things that like friends do or moms do. So I can choose like not to respect that. Same thing with loving them. Like you don't have to love every person that's in your life. Sometimes, you know, like God gave us all <laughs> our families and that's, that's just what we have around us. Um, but I, yes, what you're saying about respecting everyone without agreeing with them. Absolutely. I think everyone is deserving to have a respectable opinion about everything in the world. So thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> thank you. Cool. Oh, thanks, Jody. <laughs> of course. All right. I'm not getting any more questions. Remember everyone, if you still have any more questions, you can go ahead. But but from my end, I'm not getting any questions. Lauren, could you give us maybe quick 30 seconds, one thing that you definitely would leave us with, just to kind of give us a good feeling for the rest of the week, some motivation and some encouragement, maybe just 30 seconds quickly, or a minute, doesn't really matter. Just give us something to feel good, something to smile about for the week. Okay. I'm going to pull out the cheese factor here. <laughs> I just want to remind everybody that your dreams, no matter if they're really big or really small, are 100% within reach. And just don't be afraid to go after them. And I, again, I always go back to it's really who you have around you and who supports you. Go after your crazy dreams. And if that means, like I said earlier, packing all your stuff in a backpack and traveling the world and teaching the kids in India, then that's what that means. So just don't be afraid to do what you want, do what makes you happy. It's our, it's your life to live. So go for it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. So You're ladies welcome. and gentlemen, before you go, remember, if you want to request the recording, you can definitely do so. It's in the chat, the email address, Miss Dice would have sent it. So you can scroll right back up. Lauren, honestly, Honestly, I wrote down everything. I think everyone is used to me always writing down, but I definitely <laughs> wrote down so many things because I did learn a lot. And you reaffirmed so many things, especially with the boundaries. I'm going to be a stickler for setting healthier boundaries. But I think I speak wholeheartedly on behalf of everyone here, our regional friends, our international friends friends and our local friends that we truly enjoyed your presentation not only were you bubbly and vibrant but you actually gave us pragmatic steps to do things and it was in digestible pieces so we really could understand and we could go into the week and move on into our lives being our best selves and just really knowing more about ourselves so i just want to express the gratitude on behalf of everyone here and the UEAA, thanking you so much for your time, your effort, and your expertise. I do hope you have an enjoy, sorry, the rest of your night and keep thank safe. You. And thank you once again. Yes, thank you. And I just have to say thank you as well. Thank you so much for like being here and listening to me speak. I know you may not know me, so that really means a lot that you all stuck around and were interested. So I'm so glad that you all were able to learn things and take things away. And I look forward to connecting with you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. Or thank you so much, Lauren. And thank you so much, everyone. So whether it's good morning or good night, thank you so much for tuning in to another webinar. Take care. Please be safe and enjoy the rest of your day or your night. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye.